Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of The Suited Shootist. I wanted to thank everybody that is new to the channel. Appreciate you subscribing, glad to have you. If you're not familiar yet, we've got a Facebook group, Bespoke Solutions, where a lot of folks are talking about things like elevating their style, integrating their concealment tools into a, an elevated wardrobe, and a whole bunch of great conversations. So there's a link to that in the description. We'd love to have you join us over there as well. In addition, uh, the Patreon is growing and appreciate all the support for that as well. We've got some great conversations, sometimes going in a little bit uh, more nitty gritty of certain topics, some of the more sensitive things that we'll talk about on there, like non-permissive environments, as well as we, uh, we have some great monthly live streams and some stuff like that as well. So definitely worth checking out. I've got the link for that down in the description as well. So what I wanted to touch on today was something that uh, I've, I've referenced quite a few times in online discussions that I've had but I, I felt like it was just worth making a quick video on as well. And it's the fact that your concealed carry equipment is personal protective equipment. And uh, on its surface, the reaction is, well, yeah, no kidding. It's a pretty obvious statement. But when you dig into it, in order for things to be useful, PPE, they have to meet a certain performance standard. Let's use eye protection as the perfect example. Something in order for it to be good quality eye protection, it's not just stylish and sits on your face and doesn't pinch your nose when you're wearing it for six, eight hours a day. It is there because it has been proven under testing to stop shrapnel that is hurtling at your face. Again, fairly obvious statement. And yet, for some reason, people don't necessarily apply the same thought process to their gear choices, which is interesting. Because the reality of it is, is that this stuff is here not just to make us shoot well on the square range, not just to look cool on Instagram, this is emergency, life-saving, rescue gear. And because of that, we need to treat it as such. Far too many people will use comfort as the sole driving element of whatever their um, gear selection is. Or they think that because they're able to strap a gun on their belt line and just go about their daily life, that that's sufficient. The problem is, is, is that that's the equivalent of the eye protection that just sits on your face and doesn't pinch your nose. We don't care about what it does there. We care about how it performs in the moment that we are calling on it to protect us. So when it comes to handguns, when it comes to holsters, when it comes to all the supplemental gear, the important part is how it performs in a fight. And this is why force on force training is so critical, is that is the laboratory testing for defensive gear. The fact that you're able to stuff a gun in your waistband and have it be roughly in the same position as it was six hours later is kind of immaterial because if it doesn't hold that firearm in place when you're rolling around with somebody on top of you, or if you can't get at it with one hand because you're having to do something with the other one, all of those elements come into play. And so this is where the whole works for me mantra tends to fall short because a lot of folks haven't found what the failure points are for their equipment yet. And so they don't really know whether or not it works for them under the criteria that it's going to be called upon in, if that makes sense. So that's the idea is if we are, if we acknowledge the idea that our equipment is emergency life-saving rescue gear, and it is, it, then we need to treat it like personal protective equipment and hold it to a certain standard of performance. Now, the challenge is, is, is that there is no ANSI spec. There are no OSHA ratings for holsters and handguns. It'd be kind of nice if there were, but that opens the door to a whole other set of problems that I really don't want to go into. 
So it's then incumbent upon us as the users to do our own testing and find out what the limitations are so that that way we know that we are operating within the capabilities of the tool set. It's an unpopular opinion because force on force training is not nearly as accessible as a lot of you know, kind of square range, draw and fire and, and make expensive noise training. And doubly so, good force on force training is, from my understanding, very resource heavy because there's a lot of scripting and you need skilled role players and all this. But it is absolutely something worth pursuing because that way you can actually flush out and see whether or not your equipment works. Absent that, something like Hill Country Combatives uh, in-fight weapon access, which isn't really scenario-based, it's purely the techniques of it, but even in a, like a one-day class like that, just putting the gear through the paces in a, in a drill-based environment will identify any potential shortcomings. So there is a lot of that that thankfully is becoming more and more accessible, I highly recommend that you check it out. Obviously, um, for the, the scenario-based uh, ECQC, Craig Douglas's material is, is generally viewed as kind of the gold standard, but as well, like I mentioned, uh, Cliff at Hill Country Combatives puts on some great stuff. Uh, I don't know if they're, if they're still doing it since Dr. April passed, but I know that Tom Givens would put on his uh, Establishing the Dominance Paradigm class which is a lot of that same scenario based and from all reports Carl Wren also puts on some phenomenal force on force training that I'm hoping to take advantage of here in the near future as well so it's out there you might have to look a little bit harder for it but if we're gonna treat our personal protective equipment like personal protective equipment we've got to hold it to a standard and so the best standard that exists at this point is can it survive pressure-based force-on-force training. Some can, some can't. But there's only one way for you to know for sure. I definitely recommend you check it out. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And aside from that, I hope everybody has a great week. Stay safe and stay sharp. <laughs>